Yes, uh, I have a question to Dr. Dominiak. Uh, you said that uh, the limited state is full of contradictions. Uh, would you be uh, would you be ready to accept the limited state as a step towards uh, gaining the anarcho-capitalistic society, or would you say that uh, there is another way to achieve uh, anarcho-capitalism? Anarcho Okay, th thank you for that question. I, I think it will just uh, cool us down a bit because, <laughs> because uh, well, you know, we have this format of the debate and we're supposed to argue for the opposite positions, but uh, I think that should be stated that we both come from libertarian, uh, although you're not willing to use the word, yeah. uh, we both come, so maybe let me change the word. So we both come from the respect for individual rights and we want to analyze uh, the possible systems, the political systems or social systems that can uh, um, consistently and to the high extent, I guess also, that would be important consideration, uh, provide protection for these rights. So although there is some disagreement between us, uh, as you can imagine, I guess, this disagreement is really uh, insignificant in comparison to how many things we share and for and how many uh, ideas we share and uh, in how many uh, co in the concepts and uh, and the rights and liberties we, we believe in uh, so uh, well let's say outside the format of the debate I would of course say that limited government is uh, highly desirable let me maybe quote uh, a friend of mine uh, Walter Block he has this uh, uh, a really uh, funny joke when uh, when a person asks uh, an economist how is your wife the answer is uh, compared to what so uh, so how is limited government compared to what uh, limited government of course compared to what we have currently is an amazing solution so I would say well I would absolutely welcome that I would even welcome uh, limited government as not leading anywhere else but uh, as far as principles are concerned, I, I think that the, the right is on the side of anar anarcho-capitalist uh, position. Uh, the, the right is on the side of uh, full respect to individual rights. But this is comparatively insignificant, uh, I mean, in comparison to how many things we share, I guess. So I, I'm going to disagree. <laughs> um, I, I think it's a big deal. I, I think the disagreement is a big deal, and it's one of the reasons I won't call myself a libertarian. Um, and I think at the end of the day, we haven't talked about this, but it's, it's probably going it, to, it probably results in the fact that we don't define individual rights correctly the same way, and that we don't apply individual rights the same way, and that there are deeper, much deeper philosophical issues at bay where we disagree on, because I don't think you can come to the anarcho-capitalist position, or the anarchist position, um, without, I think, making deep philosophical errors for example, in the role of violence in human life and what individual rights actually mean. I mean, since you mentioned Walter Block, I will ask the question, you know, is it okay, is it rights violating to have sex with a five-year-old child? Now, I would argue absolutely it's rights violating. It's a horrific rights violation and that person should spend a big chunk of their life in jail, if not forever. But they are libertarians, uh, they are anarchists who say, well, why? It's consensual. The child might have said yes, but what it, you know, but that's meaningless, right? Um, and it, it, there might be a protection agency that protect, will protect your right, right, in quotes, to have sex with that five-year-old child. Now, what does one do if there is a protection agency? Let's say I'm offering uh, services to pedophiles. I am a right, rights protection agency that protects the rights of uh, men to have, or women, doesn't matter, I mean, it's harder, but to have sex with a five-year-old child. What, what do you do with that? How do, how do we solve this issue? How do we combat it? How do we get rid of this agency? People voluntarily are signing up. People voluntarily are willing to participate. Maybe even parents are voluntarily willing to have their kids participate. It's all voluntary. How do we deal with it? Well, I, I mean, I've got, I've got like creepy crawlers down my spine just thinking about that, right? Because they are sick parents and they are sick people who want to have sex with five-year-olds. And, and anarchism would legitimize that completely. Now, 
that means there's no such thing as individual rights. That means the negation of individual rights and the negation of what it even means to be voluntary. How can a five-year-old be voluntary anything? And how can a parent abuse a child and get away with it? So these are complex issues that anarchism defaults on and ultimately has to lead to massive injustices of these individual rights that supposedly we agree upon, but I'm not sure we do agree on them. Um, and I certainly don't think we, we, we see them as coming from the same source and, and applying in the same way. So I think, and, and this is my resistance to saying we agree on a lot of things, I, I'm not sure we do if once you start peeling away the, the, the rhetoric into what it actually means. Okay, um, so I have a question to the Dr. Brook. So was your last comment based on, on what, on this taste? Like, would you be equally what? moved? Sorry. What your, was your last comment based on, I don't know, moral distaste or repugnance? Or would you be equally moved, uh, I don't know, if I just come back home now and being, enjoying my property and all my liberties, I masturbate watching pornography? I don't know, would you call it unjust or... I don't know, are, are you against uh, effectively principle of voluntariness? I don't know, like, uh, does your position imply that if... I mean, your masturbation is not violating anybody's rights. I don't care yeah, if you absolutely. masturbate. So Why would I care? It? Yeah, because I'm trying, would to anybody test, care? I'm trying to test your approach. Like, is it based on I this taste repugnance? So let's assume that... I mean, oh, my point is this. My point is that application of individual rights is complicated. And applying it, for example, to children is very complex. But children have rights, and those rights are held in trust by parents. But somebody has to supervise the parents to make sure they don't abuse that trust. And that, for example, is one of the roles of government, to protect the rights of the child from, often, his own parents. And there is no way, there's no way to, I just gave that example as a, as a, as a, as a, as a way in which Anarchy cannot deal with that, and indeed anarchy would encourage the creation of societies of pedophiles with parents who want to abuse their kids to join together. Now, I consider pedophilia a capital offense. It's as close to getting, you know, shot as I can think of. Now, you masturbating, I mean, good for you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually very much pro-masturbation. I think masturbation is wonderful. You should all do it if you're not doing it. And, and do it often. What does that have to do with molesting children? It doesn't have any relationship to the two. So, so what about gays then? What about what? what? What about gays having consensual sex? It's consensual, right? They're adults. They get to make their own decisions. Again, a child is not an adult. And there has to be differentiation between children and adults. Which again, my argument is anarchy cannot embed. You have to have a government that protects children. Okay, let me just push you a bit more. Like, there was this anecdote by Walter Block, like, uh, just, just to you know, follow uh, Dr. Binyak's style. Like, he used this anecdote, like, th there was a conference, there were two neo-Nazis yeah. in, in the audience. And he was like, peculiarly keen on sort of converting them to libertarianism. And he said, you would have a really good deal with us, with libertarians, you Nazis. You would have your goose marches. You would sing your Nazi songs in your properties, like, what's more, you could get, you could get some juice to, to the gas if, if they're willing, if they, if they vol that's volunteer. That's disgusting. <laughs> that is absolutely disgusting. But that's voluntary. No, you don't, you, you, it's not, if you want to commit suicide, that's fine. You cannot that's volu exactly a sort this of is suicide exactly. Commit. This is exactly the point where you guys don't understand what individual rights mean. You cannot voluntarily uh, give, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, assign yourself into slavery. There is no such thing as a contract. Contract means something. It is a legal document that assigns certain rights and certain responsibilities. You cannot assign yourself into slavery. If you want to commit suicide, you have every right to do that. You can commit suicide. You cannot have a right to contractually assign some Jews to come and get gassed. You can goose march. You can, you can do all... The, the paraphernalia of Nazism, you have every right to do that. You can, you can exclude from your property anybody who is not blue-eyed and blonde. But the idea 
that you can voluntarily gas people is sick and disgusting. And this is why, I, I mean, I'm disgusted by Walter Block and, and why I, I find him an enemy of liberty. Not a friend of liberty, but an enemy of liberty and on the side of the Nazis and the communists. And that's why I view gang warfare on that side. I, I don't view it, that as being consistent with freedom. Contracts means something. That's not whatever you want. It's not whatever you whim. This is exactly what individual rights are trying to get away from. It's to get away from the idea that whim is primary. Whatever you feel like is primary. By the way, those Nazis, even if all they do is goose steps, I'm still going to call them evil. I still think they're a th they, they, you know, I'm still going to watch them because I think they're a threat. And I still think they're evil, morally evil, for holding those ideas. So there is such a thing as. You were not moved by me masturbating, but now you're moved by Nazi. Because I don't think I don't think you masturbating is illegal. I, sorry, is immoral. I think you masturbating is moral. I think I mean it depends why you masturbate and how you masturbate and all that. Maybe it is immoral, but generally masturbation I think is a moral activity. Uh, I think that holding certain ideas holding certain ideas like Nazism, holding certain ideas like Communism, is immoral. Do I violate anybody by holding ideas? Morality is not about whether you violate rights or not. Morality is about how you live your life. This is exactly what I, what I argued before. We don't agree on a lot. We disagree fundamentally. Uh, most anarcho anarchists are moral subjectivists. Most anarchists don't believe in individual rights. Most anarchists don't believe in an objective morality. We disagree on the most fundamental questions about human engagement. And this is why I don't think, oh, we agree on most stuff, we disagree on just this final outcome. No. For most, and not everybody, there's some anarchists who I think we do agree on a lot of stuff. Uh, but for most anarchists, we disagree on a whole slew of philosophical questions. And that disagreement is reflected in the fact that we also disagree in this political issue. If I, if I can uh, jump in for a second. Uh, so, well, I, I, think, I think that was quite important what you said, bec what you said because uh, I, I agree that this is what uh, distinguishes us or what divides us. Because uh, libertarianism and, uh, well, anarcho-capitalism as, as a form of libertarianism uh, is a, a view that, we, that can be called a, a thin uh, philosophical view. So we don't really try to impose on people any so-called objective morality. You just pick and choose. This time you picked and choose masturbation as actually okay and marching Nazis as uh, not okay. We're not doing this. What we're doing is we try to distribute sph spheres of freedom between individuals and uh, provided, uh, provided they don't violate each other's rights, each other's domains, borders of jurisdictions, they can do whatever they want. Uh, so we, we are respectful of, free, respectful of freedom, whereas you've just, you've just shown, uh, in my opinion, that there are some limits to freedom for you. The limits being uh, that there is some particular so-called objective, I can't see why it's objective, it's just particular morality, you pick and choose some things and you call them unethical. I'm not, as a libertarian, as a libertarian, not as a human being, but as a libertarian, we basically are not judgmental. We, we don't try to impose uh, on people any particular uh, uh, b morality. And we see the distinction between right and morality very, very clearly. And to this point, actually referring to the problem with children that we referred to, uh, I guess, uh, I guess, like as a libertarian, we can't say anything about morality of uh, well, having sexual acts with children. But I guess, as a human being, of course, we would condemn it. But as libertarians, uh, we would basically point out to the difference: the difference between rights as a protection of interests and different sorts of protections of interest. There are different sorts of protection of interest. There is morality. Uh, that you mentioned. There is ethics that you mentioned. Uh, there is repugnance that was mentioned by, uh, by, uh, by uh, um, one person in the audience. Uh, and of course uh, we would refer to these elements uh, as human beings as uh, protecting children against these kind of abuses. Uh, well, 
so, so, so basically I can't see uh, the problem here. I think that there is of course some disagreement between us about what rights in this case we would like to uh, assign to children. I guess there are some rights you wouldn't like to assign to children. For instance, you wouldn't assign a right to a child to sell a real estate. You wouldn't like to assign a, a right to a child to perform any other legal actions. The only right you would be willing to assign to a, ch to a child, I, I guess, would be a, a, a right to be protected against physical violence by, by other people. As far as I'm concerned, I think libertarianism has resources to do exactly the same. Although we wouldn't go further, we wouldn't go into thick theory, we wouldn't tell people what to do if they don't want to, we wouldn't pick and choose this and that as moral or immoral and, and refer to so-called objective morality. No, this is good because it, 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 this is exactly why I do not call myself libertarian. Uh, I, I find much of that re repugnant. And, what, and, and the fact is that I don't want to impose my morality, but I do think there is a true morality. I do think there's a right morality. And that morality... What, what if I what, disagree? Let, let, let me, let, then you can live your life as long as you don't violate other people's rights, do what, whatever the hell you want. But don't claim then, don't claim that we agree on individual rights because we do not. And this is, this is why this idea that libertarians believe in individual rights, we just think this is how we arbitrate them. You don't agree on individual rights. That is, individual rights are not random. Individual rights from a particular moral perspective. Individual rights are a moral concept. They're not even a political concept. They're a moral concept. They're a concept that bridges morality with politics. So let's be philosophical, right? We want to be philosophical. This, the whole idea was a moral defense of anarchism. Well, if morality is completely subjective, is morality is whatever you want it to be, then there is no moral defense of anything. It's whatever you happen to agree with, whatever you feel like. There is no truth. There is no one moral truth, right? It's random. It's whimsical. It's whatever, right? So I believe that there is a moral truth. I believe that some systems are moral and some systems are immoral. But you say you can't say it's immoral. It depends. Some people might like it. No, there is an objective truth here. So the concept of individual rights and how we come to it and how we apply it and how where it applies depends on having a proper conception of morality. And if we do not have a proper conception of morality, as I think most libertarians do not, then the concept of individual rights is flawed and therefore their security agencies are all going to be flawed because they're trying to protect the wrong thing. The whole thing, the whole uh, agenda is logically false and logically cannot stand because you won't accept the existence of an objective morality on which to base your moral case for X. Well, just, just last one word if I, if I can because uh, that's really interesting. Uh, well, you know, I said that we share many things. I, sh I said that we share belief in uh, individual rights. Uh, Yet I agree with you that in some respects our definitions of uh, individual rights are different. One of these respects, of course, that I identified during my speech is that you uh, think that there is no right not to be expropriated by the state. There's no right, individual right, it's not to be... what I said and you know that. No, no, <laughs> there's no right. with a protection service on a given territory if there is a monopolistic, uh, compulsory monopolistic uh, agency called the state. The second, the second thing is that, uh, well, libertarianism is really respectful uh, of the fact of, uh, which is uh, usually called moral, moral pluralism, that people can reasonably, reasonably, uh, can reasonably differ as far as their moral doctrines are concerned. We have Christians, we have Catholics, we have Jews, we have various uh, reasonable moral doctrines that differ. And, and because we have this moral pluralism, exactly because of this reason, libertarianism is a preferable uh, way of distributing between people uh, domains of freedom to decide for themselves which moral doctrine they want to follow and not to impose on them so-called objective morality that they can disagree with, basically. So, one quick comment. Most moral doctrines, most moral doctrines, most. almost all of them, almost all moral doctrines think that using force on other people in order to make right 
is a good thing. Most moral doctrines do not recognize individual rights. Suddenly the Judeo-Christian Islamic moral tradition has no respect for individual rights and believes explicitly that it's okay to use force on other people in order to straighten them out. So I think moral pluralism, great, right? But as long as the morality of individualism is not the dominant morality, then you will not have freedom. Uh, and uh, and it, as long as you advocate for moral pluralism, you will never have freedom. Moral pluralism is the way to go down in flames to the statists, to the to the Christian statists, the Jewish statists, the, the the Islamic statists, and all and the secular statists who use their moral code in order to justify their rule. It is a way to fail if you believe in liberty. Okay, thank you, Jim. What is the difference between objective and non-objective law, and what are the consequences in society of each? Well, that is one of the most important questions today. An objective law is a law which defines objectively uh, what constitutes a crime or what is forbidden and the kind of penalties that a man would incur if he performs the forbidden action. Uh, objective means uh, definable, graspable, by a rational consciousness. Therefore, an objective law would be a law which a man can understand and apply, so that every man ahead of committing an action would be able to tell what uh, is the crime forbidden, what penalty would he incur if he uh, commits it, and can make a decision accordingly. To be a law-abiding citizen, he would, should be able to understand the law and apply it as guidance to his own social actions. Now, a non-objective law is one which cannot be defined. It means a law without specific definition, which may have as many different interpretations as there are men. Under a non-objective law, a citizen cannot tell what is for, per, permitted or forbidden. He cannot tell what uh, action is socially accepted, what action will be punished, and what will be the nature of the punishment. A non-objective law is left strictly at the interpretation of the authorities, usually the judges under dictatorships, it would be the commissars. But uh, in any case, a non-objective law is one which a man cannot interpret himself a law that is not defined and is, is in fact undefinable. The best example of it is, of course, antitrust legislation, where a man cannot tell actually what is permitted to him, or what is forbidden, and may commit a, a legal crime without knowing that he's doing it. Mr. Ryan, a very popular legal doctrine holds that law is actually what judges say it is, and that legislative enactments are only sources of the law which the judges use to derive what they believe the law is. Do you, do you, do you believe this is a primary cause of the present say, state of non-objective law? Uh, it's not the primary cause, it's one of the manifestations. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was Justice Holmes, uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, who originated that doctrine. He was the, the worst philosophical influence on American law. Uh, that is a statement of pure non-objectivity. This is the formula for tyranny. Because if the laws are whichever the judges interpret, I don't see the purpose of having any laws at all. It would simply mean that whichever the judges or the authorities decide at any given moment uh, will determine what happens to the citizens of a country. It is not a formulation of law, it's the destruction, the negation of the concept of law.